Yeah, I'd also like to relate to this incomprehensible feeling that there was a person a moment ago and he no longer exists. As much as it's hard for us to understand life in general, furthermore, to understand this, I agree, to agree with it. Yeah, but it doesn't say about the limitedness of our perception, about our lack of understanding of the situation, immaturity, doesn't it say anything about that? Like you're saying, it's the that we can't grasp, that we don't have the, the, the ability. Probably we are facing life and we see something from life, we can grasp a part of it, like small children, and not the entire thing, what's going on here, this is something that we don't know. Suddenly there's death and that's it, no more. You're looking at the body and you see that it's no longer a person, your friend or your relative, God forbid, but gone. How could it be that it was and now it's gone? That this person, he lived in me in some way, his projection in me and my qualities and my desires and my feeling and my memory, and suddenly he almost disappears. How could it be that there is something and it stopped? Yeah, we really can't digest it. And I think that this isn't a problem with reality itself, because nothing exists forever. But the problem is in our perception, that our perception is limited. It, it doesn't see before birth or a bit before birth we see from a drop of seed and until the boundaries of death. What's going on here? Why is life built this way? How come that it's limited inside a body, takes up some volume, small volume of reality on the one hand, on the other hand we attribute to it special things, great things, much more much broader, essential than the body itself. This animalistic level that exists before me, that's true. It's lack of maturity, lack of perception of reality, lack of orientation. So how can we find our way around and digest this sudden, sudden we got used to it, we live in it, and we as if don't feel any flaw about it. Not because there is no flaw about it, but as a result of we're living our life, we can't see beyond it, so we agree and somehow we accept it, we cover it up somehow, that that's how it is and that's it. Yeah, that that's life, but the truth is that in other religions and beliefs, they, they, uh, in religions and beliefs, they tell the stories that it's like this, like that, you can believe them because you have no choice, and it's a kind of a compensation for what we call our life, that it suddenly ends, and so on. But really? Really, we have to to see things much more, how to put it, maturely, and we have the ability to do it. What do you mean maturely? Maturely meaning that we will see beyond life and death, beyond the small reality that we see now, right now. Can we see reality on a higher level, meaning not to be as little animals and to see everything from our body through our five bodily senses, smell, taste, touch, seeing, hearing, or we'll develop other senses, outer body senses that don't exist in our corporeal body, outside of our body, that don't exist inside our this body of ours, which is the animate level. The wisdom of Kabbalah speaks about it all. That's why it's called the wisdom of Kabbalah. In Hebrew means perception, reception. 
how can we open up our eyes and see a truer, broader reality and see it here and now? After the body dies, I don't know what happens. And the wisdom of Kabbalah, it explains that really we live in a very special way that we are on the animate level like all other animals we exist for a certain period of time our body exists and throughout this period of time we have a wondrous opportunity to reach a higher degree the degree of a human being Adam in Hebrew which also means to be similar to a higher world the eternal world the complete world and whole and we can do that if we rise above our corporeal body and we start building a spiritual body for ourselves of a spiritual degree. The spiritual body, it's the opposite to what we're experiencing today, the way we feel ourselves. It's truly spirit. What does it mean that it's a force without body? What is a force without body? When we build this force, our spirituality, as a result of starting to relate to each other in an opposite way than we do now, that if now we relate to each other egoistically, and even the love that we have towards children, towards our relatives, it's also an egoistic love because they're relatives, I love them, I feel that I depend on them, and so on. So, if, if we start building our reality and we can't build our attitude towards reality in an opposite way, opposite to our ego, then in this other force which I acquire, the force of love and bestow to others, I start feeling a different reality, a network of connections which I build by my attitude towards the environment, if I start treating the environment not in a way that I want to use everyone as much as I can for my own benefit, if I start changing my attitude for everyone to be well off equally, then I start seeing, it's simple psychology, I start seeing reality, a different reality, a reality in which all of us are interconnected, mutually interconnected, and the force working between us is the force of love and connection and mutual bestowal. And then I start changing my perception, the way I think, the way I look at things, and I feel that I exist in a different world. And really, my, my mind changes, my feeling, my perception. I see a different reality.